Hey, it's me, MLB. Uh, this is my first time posting on YouTube. These stories are mine. Uh, well, the plot line is anyway. The uh, creator of uh, the characters that I've used in this story are from Boku no Hero Academia. Um, Kohei Horikoshi, I hope I said his name right. Um, and this is a story with um, Karishima Ijiro. Sorry if I've said his name wrong. I am an Australian, so excuse the accent um, as I will be saying mummy instead of mom. I think that's how most Americans pronounce it. Um, this is my story called Be With Me. Uh, it's originally written as an ex-reader, um, but I am now changing it to an ex-listener, obviously, because you'll be listening to it on YouTube. So hopefully it translates well enough. Um, if you <coughs> want to read the story ahead of time, you're welcome to find it on my website, uh, quirkyfanfix.com. Um, I'll hopefully put the link uh, to it at the beginning of the story so that you can find it. But until then, here we go. We'll see how this story goes. So this is chapter one, Be With Me, Shark. Mummy, someone's moving in next door. Your four-year-old voice rang out down the hall as you sat at the front window peering through the glass with one tiny hand holding the sheer curtains back. And there's a boy! Your mum chuckled to herself from where she was chopping vegetables for dinner. Well then why don't you go out and say hello, she called encouragingly back to you. But stay in the yard please, Yin. Yes, mummy, he yelled back as you jumped off the top lounge and scurried to the front door. Reaching up on tippy toes, you placed your hands on the front door knob and swung it to the side. The door jab clicked open from the hold and out the door swung. You jumped down the front steps and skipped over to the white picket fence that surrounded your front yard and pressed your face up to the painted wooden posts peeking through. Strong men carried boxes and furniture past your viewing place and up to the front door of the neighbouring house. You followed their movements with, it, with your eyes. I wonder where that boy went. Um, hello? A small voice said from beside you on your side of the fence. You jumped back and looked to your left. There was a small boy, about the same height as you, standing there looking at you. What are you doing here? This is where I live, you squeaked. Why was he standing in your yard? Didn't he know he was supposed to live next door? You live there, you pouted, pointing authoritatively to the neighbouring house. The boy looked to where you were pointing and grinned. That's my new house, he said excitedly, flashing you a wide smile. Your eyes were immediately drawn to his sharp, pointy teeth. You have sharp teeth, you stated bluntly. He blushed and covered his mouth hurriedly, slightly embarrassed that you'd pointed out his teeth so quickly. Um, yeah, he mumbled through his fingers. Oh, but I like them. They're like a shark's teeth. teeth shark's teeth are cool, you said proudly, placing your closed fist on your hips. What's your name? My name is Yin. I'm Ichiro, the boy replied shyly, slowly taking his hands down from his mouth. Is that your first name? Don't you know you're only supposed to tell people your first name when you're really good friends with them, you chided. Oh, Ijiro blushed again and lowered his gaze, stubbing his toe into the soft grass of your front lawn. Well, do you want to be my friend? Yeah, okay, you replied confidently. Would you like to be my best friend? Because you live right next door to me, you beamed at him. His shy eyes shot up and met yours. R really, we can be best friends? Of course we can, you replied, rolling your eyes. Come and meet my mum. Then it's real, you said, grabbing his hand and marching towards your front door. Or, um, okay, and then you can come and meet my mum so that she knows it too, he said, running a, a little to keep up with you. You dragged the cute little black-haired boy with the pointy teeth up to your front steps and pushed the front door open. Mummy, I want you to meet my best friend, you hollered down the hallway, dragging Ijiro behind you. You found your mum in the kitchen and proudly presented your new neighbour. Mummy, this is my best friend. Your mother turned and smiled down at the shy little boy as he hid behind you a little and peeked out. Hello, sweetheart. Have you just moved here today? She asked, crouching down so she was eye level with him. Mm-hmm, he replied with a small nod of his head. What's your name, darling? Your mum asked him. Before Ijiro could reply, you piped up and answered for him. Um, his name is Shark, mummy, because he has really pointy teeth. Look! You reached out for the poor little boy's mouth and pulled his lips apart so that your mum could see. Ijiro pushed your hands away and hid his mouth, tears welling up in his eyes from embarrassment. You saw and felt bad immediately. Oh, I'm sorry, best friend, you said, hugging him. I didn't mean to make you sad. You patted his head softly. Ijiro looked at you and then at your mum and then back to you. 
I'm, I'm sorry, you added, taking his face in your hands and turning to him. I really like you and I want to call you Shark because I love sharks. Idro seemed okay with that explanation and removed his hands from his mouth and sniffed, wiping his eyes gently. Well, what do I call you then, he asked, cocking his head to the side. Well, my quirk is that I can make glue come out of my fingers. It's really strong glue, you said, straightening with pride. So it's sticky, he asked. Um, well, I guess so, you replied, thinking about it. Is it icky? He questioned again. You giggled. Yeah, it's definitely icky. I'll call you Icky then, Ijiro said, happy to have come up with an acceptable nickname. You giggled again and placed your arm across his shoulders, turning to face your mum, who was still an amused onlooker of this very cute interaction between her little girl and the new neighbour. We are best friends, Shark and Icky, you proudly presented. And now I'm going to go and meet his, my best friend, Mummy. Your mum stifled a giggle and stood up. OK, sweetheart, well, I would like to meet your best friend's mum too, so I'll come with you. She followed you as you and your new best friend, Shark, ran for the front door. She was so happy that you'd made a best friend so quickly. She had hoped that you would find someone soon so that the move to this new area would be less daunting for you. Looks like you'd be just fine after all. Mummy, can I go play at Sharky's house? Your adorably excited little voice pierced her morning coffeeless stupor. Oh, what time is it, darling? She asked in a croaky voice, only just having woken up herself. Um... Twenty o'clock, you replied with sincerity, a dead serious look on your face. Poor mum had to look away to hide her smile. She glanced at her wristwatch. Sweet pea, it's very early. I don't think Sharky would even be awake at this tap, 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 tap. Your mum turned to the kitchen window to see a stick smacking against the window. The owner of the stick was too short to be seen, but she had a fairly good idea of who it might be. That's Sharky, you replied excitedly, bouncing up and down. Mummy, please, please, can I go play? Your puppy dog eyes would have melted every heart within a hundred mile radius of the house. Yes, darling, you can go, but please be home for lunch, she called as you tore off down the hall. Months had gone by and every waking moment was spent with your best friend, Sharky. You loved to play with him and he with you. The two of you would invent games to play and would chat about your favourite things and what you wanted to do when you grew up. Ijiro loved the hero named Crimson Riot and had a lot of his figurines. He wanted to become a hero one day too and would often ask to play savings where you'd pretend to be stuck somewhere or to be held captive by a bad guy and he'd come and save the day. You loved how heroic he was and he was always very kind when he saved you. Ijiro often told you you could be a hero too but you didn't think so. My quirk isn't very good for saving but it's good for fixing you would say. Ijiro's quirk was called hardening. He could make any part of his body as hard as a rock and it definitely came in handy if he activated it when he fell. He wouldn't get hurt at all. You thought that was pretty cool. One afternoon, you and Sharky were having an afternoon tea picnic under the old elm tree when a pack of rogue dogs happened to pass by. The dogs, being drawn by the smell and sight of food, trotted over to take a better look. They weren't mean dogs, but they were big and their desire for food made them target fixated. So they galloped over and crashed your picnic, food flying everywhere. Being only four years of age, this sudden frenzy scared you silly and you jumped up and screamed, ready to run for home. As you started to run, you tripped and fell, spreading your hands out to catch your fall. Because of the spike in adrenaline in your system, your body activated your quirk subconsciously and a thick glue oozed from your fingertips, fastening you to the ground. This wasn't the first time your quirk had manifested, but being only new at having a quirk, you didn't have complete control over it and it was known to be set off at random times. You screamed in terror when you realised you couldn't get up and looked around wildly for Idro. You could see him still running ahead and screamed his name. His steps faltered and he looked back, fear etched into his little face. Because of your screams for help, the dogs moved their attention to you, trotting over to see why this little human was making such a hideous noise. One dog found some crumbs and leftover jam on your cheeks and started licking your face profusely. You screamed again and tried to get away but your glue held you fast. From where Idro stood, it looked like the dogs were mauling you and his stomach churned at what he deemed to be a sickening sight. She's dead, he thought. I couldn't save her, I was too scared. Tears flooded down his cheeks as he ran for home, your terrified screams echoing in his ears. As he got closer to the house, your mother came flying out the door. She had heard the screams and recognised them as her little girls. She took one look at Ijiro's crying face and panicked, thinking the worst. Honey, get your mum, she yelled as she raced past him and off down the street. 
She rounded the corner and saw the pack of dogs pinning you to the ground and pulled one of her shoes off, pegging it at the pack of dogs and managing to nail one in the side of its head. It yelped in pain and ran off, the other dogs following after it. You were bawling and screaming and your mum quickly looked you over for any wounds. Sweetheart, are you okay? Are you hurt? She cried, trying to pick you up off the ground. Mummy, my hands, my hands, you screamed as she tried to lift you off the ground. What happened to you? She saw the glue. Oh dear. Okay, darling, don't worry, we'll get it unstuck. She kissed your tear-stained cheeks and kissed your forehead. Are you hurt, darling? Did the dogs bite you? No, mummy, you sobbed. They just started jumping on me and I couldn't get up. Okay, sweetheart, don't worry. Sharky has gone to get help from his mummy. She'll be here very soon, she reassured you. Slowly you calmed down, sniffing every so often and blinking to get the tears out of your eyes. Your mum sat back beside you on the dirt and held you close. Almost immediately after that, Ijiro's mum rounded the corner, but no Ijiro was there. Together they got your hands free of the ground and your mum carried you home to wash the remaining clods of dirt off and dissolve the glue. Where did Sharky go? you asked Ijiro's mum. I'm not sure, honey. I'll go get him and get him to come visit you once we've got you cleaned up. But no, Ijiro came. The next morning, you went to knock on his door. Mrs. Karishima opened the door and welcomed you inside. Ijiro, honey, Icky's here to see you, she called up the stairs. Silence was the only reply. That's odd. He was there just a minute ago, she said, tilting her head. Oh, that's okay, Mrs. Karishima. I'll go up and see him, you told her brightly and started heading up the stairs. Sharky? You asked, pushing his bedroom door open. You looked around his room and your eyes settled on a lump under the blankets in the middle of his bed. Sharky, I can see you, you said happily, bounding over and jumping up on the bed to crawl over the lump that was your best friend. As you reached a hand out to touch him, you heard quiet sobbing coming from underneath. Sharky? Sharky, are you crying? You asked, worry rising in your voice. Why are you crying? You asked again, grabbing the covers and pulling them back to reveal a very sad little bundle curled up in the middle of his bed. He looked up at you and whimpered, his bottom lip quivering. I c couldn't save you the other day and it made me sad, he said, stuttering every second word. But Sharky, you did save me. You ran and got your mum, you replied encouragingly. No, I didn't. That was your mum that told me to get, get her. And all I did was run away and left you there to die. He started bawling again. I can't be a hero if I'm scared. I'll never be a hero. Sharky, don't say that. You're an amazing hero and you'll be the bestest hero ever. I just know it, you yelled triumphantly. He sat up and lunged at you, knocking you down with his tight hug and cried into your shirt. You just lay there and snuggled into him, whispering words of love and encouragement. Sharky was never really the same after that day. His confidence had taken a hit and he retreated into himself a little bit, but you still loved him and you were determined to show him that he had the markings of a hero and he was going to be the best hero ever. Seasons passed, days flew by, and you and Sharky continued to play every day. You'd promised each other that you'd never go anywhere and you'd be the bestest of friends always. One morning, Mrs. Karishima brought Ijiro over to play so that she could talk to your mum. You and Sharky headed off up to your room to play with your toys and left the two mothers in the kitchen together. Can I get you something to drink? Your mum asked Mrs. Karishima. Oh, no, thank you. I don't think my stomach could handle anything right now, she replied in a slightly saddened tone. Why, what's wrong? Your mum asked, worried for her neighbour, who had become a very good friend. Babe, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I've been told we've got to move at the end of this year into state for work, she said, her gaze dropping to the floor. Oh, no, really? Your mum replied sullenly, her heart sinking in her chest. Have you told Ijiro? No, I haven't, and I don't know how to break it to him. He'll be devastated, she said, fighting back tears. Well, Yin's going to be gutted, your mum said. What do we do? Mrs Karishma asked. There was a pause as they both thought. Then Karishma sp Mrs Karishma spoke again. Listen, this might sound cruel, but maybe we shouldn't tell them. Your mum thought for a moment, then nodded slowly. Yes, let's let them play together often, and then when you leave, that's it. If they know what's coming, it might make it more painful. Mrs. Karishima nodded. I'll be very sorry to see you, see you go, your mum said, her voice quivering with emotion. Yin's going to miss Ijiro like crazy, but maybe we could arrange for visits sometime? Oh, yes, let's, she replied, wiping a tear from her eye. The fated day came, and Ijiro came over to play like usual. You and he played for an hour or more when you heard the doorbell ring. Ijiro, your mum is here, your mum called. That's early, isn't it? Ijiro said, turning to you. I don't know, you shrugged. 
You and Idro skipped down to the front door where his mum waited. Idro, honey, we need to go into town, she said, doing her best to cover her emotions. We'll be back later, Kay, so give Yin a big cuddle. Your mum looked the other way and wiped a tear as you two embraced for what you didn't realise would be your last time together. Have fun in town, Chucky. You can tell me all about it tomorrow, you beamed. You bet, he replied, flashing you that big toothy smile. I'll see you then. Mrs. Karishima shot your mum a very sympathetic look and turned, leading Ijiro down the path. As they hopped into the car that was parked outside their gate, you realised you were still holding on to one of Sharky's crimson riot plush toys. Mummy, you gasped, I need to give this to Sharky to take to town. Before she could say anything, you dashed down the steps and out of the gate towards the car. It slowly pulled away from the curb and rolled down the road with you, running as fast as your little legs could take you, chasing after it. Sharky, you screamed at the disappearing car. Sharky, your toy! He must have heard you because he turned in his seat and looked out the back window. He smiled and waved when he saw you, mouthing something as he ran. What? you yelled, the car getting further and further away. Finally, you had to stop to catch your breath and the car disappeared around the corner. You shook your head and headed for home, promising yourself that you'd give it to him tomorrow. The next morning, you jumped up and ran to the front door. You swung it open and was about to run next door to Sharky's house when you saw a white van parked out the front. You paused. Men were carrying boxes and furniture out of Sharky's house and putting it into the van. You turned and sprinted back inside. Mummy! Mummy, people are stealing things from Sharky's house! You hollered as you ran to her room. Her head shot up from the pillow. Then she realised what day it was. Yin, sweetheart, come here a minute, she said softly in her just woke up voice. Sharky isn't coming back, sweetheart. Her words hit you like a slap in the face. What? you asked numbly. Sharky and his mum have had to move to another place, darling, she said as softly as she could muster. No, but they live next door, he replied, still not quite understanding the full extent of your mother's words. They did live next door, but they've had to move, sweetheart. Sharky isn't coming back. But why isn't he coming back? He has to come back. I'm his best friend, you said, hoping that your strong words would magically bring him back to you. I know, honey, but he can't come back because he has to live at his new house. But I don't want him to have a new house. I want him to come back here, you pouted, a tear falling down your cheek. Will he come back tomorrow? You asked hopefully. No, sweetheart, he's never coming back. Will I see him again? Darling, I'm not sure. But, Mummy, it's not fair, you tried to yell, your emotion catching your voice in your throat. I know, sweetheart, I know, your mum replied, her own eyes welling up with tears. Doesn't he want to be my friend any more? Your four-year-old brain was desperately trying to justify him leaving you, tears falling faster down your cheeks. Oh, honey, no, he definitely wanted to be your friend, but he has to go and be with his mummy. The conversation went around and around and around for another hour as you tried everything possible to make it so that he would come back, but to no avail. As the weight of losing your best friend finally hit you, you dissolved into an inconsolable mess, mourning terribly for your loss of your sharky. You ran to the front door and flung it open, screaming at the men who dared to take your dear sharky's things away, telling them that they were bad men and that you'd make them pay for taking his house away from you. You thought that they were the ones responsible for him being moved away. For the next three weeks, you refused to eat. You cried often and you were a shell of your former self. You pined for your best friend and dreamed about him often. Years went by and the pain of losing him lessened, but he was always in the back of your mind and occasionally you'd wonder where he was and what he was doing. Would you ever see him again? Eleven years went past and you finally finished primary school and applied for the support studies sector at UA, a prestigious high school for heroes and hero assistants. You got in. You were ecstatic. Two weeks had gone by and you'd settled in nicely. There were a lot of lovely people in your class and you'd started to venture out a bit more. You found yourself in the presence of a bubbly, vivacious young girl named Mei Hatsumi and you found her quite endearing. One afternoon, she bounced into class and bounded up to you. Hey, Yin, have you seen the hero class 1A here? She whispered excitedly. No, why? You asked curiously. You should go and sneak a peek at them. There are some really super good looking guys in that class. You laughed. Oh, really? You weren't particularly interested in guys at that moment. Your studies came first, but sure, you liked boys, so maybe it wouldn't hurt to take a little sneak peek. Quick, go and have a look before the next class starts, she encouraged. Okay, okay, you laughed. Pulling yourself up from your seat, you casually strolled out the door. You wandered down the hall and stopped when you saw the sign 1A above the door. 
This must be it, you thought. You sneaked past the open front door of the classroom and made your way up to the back door, sliding it open ever so slowly. You put an eye up against the open slot and glanced around. The first guy that you saw had extremely striking hair. It was red and white, split directly down the middle. His facial features were perfect and you couldn't help but oogle him for a bit. He was standing side on and as he tilted his head talking to a classmate, you saw that he had two different coloured eyes too, one grey and one blue. Is this a modelling class or a hero class, you wondered. Your eyes left the good-looking jewel-haired coloured guy and settled on a very angry-looking ash blonde. He had brilliant red eyes and appeared quite muscular. He was talking to a spiky redhead who had his back to you. He's good-looking too, you thought. Your eyes moved on. The next guy was a yellow-haired, friendly and bright-looking fellow with a sharp black lightning bolt through his fringe. His smile was captivating and you found yourself smiling along with him. That's how infectious it was. All these guys are so good looking, you thought. You pushed the door open a little more to see um, further in, but a loud voice stopped you in your tracks. Oi! What the? You're looking at extra? You froze. All eyes were on you immediately, and you quickly located the person behind the loud voice. It was the angry looking blonde. No surprises there. Sorry, I. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, you fumbled for an explanation. Get the f out of here, he hollered, getting up out of his seat and marching towards you. You were about to make a run for it when a voice behind you stopped you dead in your tracks. Icky? You glanced past the angry blonde who was still walking towards you and locked eyes with the muscular redhead, the guy who had had his back to you. You studied his face and then suddenly realised who it was. Sharky, you gasped. Sharky, is that you? You barreled past the angry blonde and ran towards the redhead. He beamed at you and you saw those oh fa so familiar sharp teeth. Sharky, it is you, you yelled as you threw your yourself into his arms. He grabbed you tightly and buried his head into the side of your neck. Sharky, your hair, it's red now, you exclaimed, pulling back so you could look at him. He had tears in his eyes. Icky, I missed you. I've missed you so much, he said, fighting to hold the tears at bay. What the f kind of a nickname's Icky, the angry blonde yelled as you two remained in a tight embrace. The blonde's loud voice caused you to shrink into Idro in a fear reflex as you gripped into him that little bit tighter. Idro noticed and pulled you to the side, wrapping one arm around you and holding the other out in a stop motion sign to the blonde. Back you go, you need to stop being so rude. This is my best friend Yin. We gave each other these nicknames when we were little, and that's what they are. Icky and Sharky, he said proudly, pulling you into him. Bakugo just glared at the two of you, his aura radiating hostility. Finally, he made a noise and shoved his hands in his pocket, marching back to his seat and plopping down. He dropped his chin in his hand grumpily and looked away. You looked up at Idro with admiration, and he looked down affectionately at you. Uh, you two want to get a room? The yellow-haired boy with the black lightning bolt in his fringe said cheekily. You blushed and hurriedly looked away, pushing off Ijiro. Oh, <laughs> it's nothing like that. It's just I haven't seen Sharky for 11 years, you replied to the guy, holding your arms out and waving them defensively. So you're single then? The guy asked, a suggestive hint to his voice as his eyebrows cocked with curiosity. Uh, yeah, but um, want to go on a date with me? He asked. Um, I don't even know your name. Kaminari, Danky Kaminari. The cute guy replied confidently with a wink, leaning back with his arms resting on the chair and desk behind. Bro, seriously? Leave poor Yin alone, she's only just met you, Idro laughed. You smiled gratefully at Idro, and Kaminari looked a little crestfallen, but you didn't know him, so you didn't really care too much. Oh, Sharky, what's your number? Let's exchange now so we can keep in contact, you said excitedly, pulling your phone from your pocket. You quickly punched in Sharky into your phone and he told you his number and then you rang it so that he had your number and you saw him enter it as Icky. You smiled. Hey, do you have anything on this afternoon? Come home and see mum. She would love to see you again, you squealed, bouncing up and down. That'd be awesome, he beamed. Come back to this classroom after school and we'll go together. Idra was gazing lovingly at you. Yin, I'm so glad we found each other again, he said softly, taking your hand and squeezing it. Me too, Sharky. Me too. You smiled back at him and returned the hand squeeze. The guy named Bakugo groaned loudly. Oh, for sake, can you knock it off? I'm feeling sick just listening to you two extras dribble on. You gave Idro a sympathetic look and quickly ran to the back door. Just then the bell rang, so you gave him one quick wave before taking off back to your classroom. You were floating on cloud nine. You couldn't believe that you'd found your one and only best friend again. After all these years, your mum was going to die when she saw him. She's cute, dude, Kaminari quipped to Idro as he ran off down the hall. 
Who, Yin? He replied, shocked. I don't see her in that way, bro. She's just my best friend. That's all. He rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. So you don't mind if I do a line for her then? Kaminari asked, leaning forward optimistically. Go for it, dude, Ijiro laughed. But hurt her feelings and I'll make you pay, he said, punching those last few words out with exaggerated emphasis. Okay, dude, okay, Kaminari said, holding his hands up defensively. I'll take good care of her. Don't worry. That's if she'll even date you, dunce face, Bakugo cut in. I've got my money on her having the hots for her shark boy here. He nodded his head in gesture to Ijiro. Nah, no, nah, bro. She doesn't like me like that, Ijiro laughed again. We're just friends. Bakugo smirked. We'll see, shitty air. Mum, you screamed as you entered the, through the front door. Mum, look who I found. You pulled Ijiro in behind you by the hand and waited for your mum to wake her, make her way down the stairs. She looked at the insanely happy you, then at the spiky redhead standing a little behind you and something in her memory triggered. She'd seen you with a boy slightly behind you once before, but that was when you were four years old. She studied the face of the redhead, then her jaw fell open. Sharky, she said. Hi, Miss Lynn, Idro said with shy excitement. Idro, she whispered breathlessly, running down the last few steps and making her way quickly across the floor to him, taking him in a tight embrace. Idro, darling, she sobbed into his shoulder. He was a little shocked and froze in place, but then let go of your hand and reached it around behind your mum and patted her on the back. It's okay, Miss Lynn, please don't cry. You also had tears welling up in your eyes. Idro, your mum said, pulling back from him and wiping her eyes. Honey, I'm so sorry that your mother and I never told you again that you were moving away that day. I felt sick with guilt ever since. She started sobbing. Wait, mum, you knew he was leaving that day? You said numbly. She looked at you and nodded sadly. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. We knew it would break your and Idro's heart, so we decided not to cause any extra pain. Her bottom lip quivered uncontrollably. You couldn't say anything. For some reason, it just never occurred to you that this had all been planned. Idro having to move, that is. He stood quietly and thought for a moment. Miss Lynn, it's okay. Please don't feel guilty. Yin and I have found each other again, so it's meant to be. I won't ever leave her again, he said, turning to look at you and taking your hand again. Your mum noticed you holding hands and swooned quietly to herself as you and Idro stared lovingly into each other's eyes. She cleared her throat. Um, Idro, please stay for dinner. We'd love your company. Oh, please stay, Sharky, you pleaded. I would really like that, Miss Lynn, if it's not too much trouble, he asked politely. Oh my, your beautiful manners are welcome any time, your mum beamed. Please make yourself at home while I prepare a special dinner. My Icky and Sharky are back together. She clapped her hands in delight and hummed happily. You squeezed Ijiro's hand and smiled at him. Hey, come to my room. We can chill there while mum makes dinner, you said, pulling him along. Your mum watched you both head up the stairs and smiled to herself. They are already so in love and they don't even know it, she chuckled softly to herself, shaking her head as she made her way back to the kitchen. Sharky, you laughed hysterically. This picture's hilarious. What happened here? You pointed to your phone screen. You and Idro were lying side by side on your bed, scrolling through each other's Instagram and liking all the pictures from over the years. You shared stories and funny moments from your lives apart and relived memories from that year that you'd spent together as four-year-olds. You flicked through a few more pictures and saw one where Idro had decided to dye his hair. Your thumb hovered over it for a minute before you spoke. Hey, I've been meaning to ask you. You turned your head to look at him and he was already looking at you, his eyes soft with affection. Your nose is nearly touched, but neither of you cared. Why did you dye your hair? Why didn't you leave it black, you asked, your breath tickling his lips. He gently reached a hand to your face and brushed a stray hair from your eyes, tucking it behind your ear. Yin, do you remember that day that you got attacked by those dogs and I ran away? You ran to get help, you mean, you corrected him. No, I ran away, I was a coward, he said, his voice low and angry, angry at his own selfish actions. He propped himself up on an elbow and looked down at you as you lay there. I was so disgusted at myself for not having saved you. It haunted me for months, no years afterwards, he spat. How could I ever become a hero if I was so spineless? His hands balled into fists and he gritted his teeth, reliving the memory. So I decided I would make a change. No more weak and pathetic me. I would be a new person, strong, courageous, manly, like Crimson Riot. He looked up with sparkly eyes. I would pick a bright colour to paint the future me. So I picked red, he said, looking back down at you. You smiled softly and reached a hand up to caress his cheek. Sharky, you've always been my hero, even to this day. I've only ever remembered you as a strong and courageous boy. 
He closed his eyes and nuzzled into your warm palm. You'll make an amazing hero, you whispered. I can't wait to watch you make it to your goal. He opened his eyes and looked down at you again. Yin he said softly. A sharp knock at the door interrupted your session of loving affirmation and he jumped violently. You took your hand from his cheek and sat up quickly, bumping your head into his with a loud thud. Oof! You grunted, then dissolved into giggles. Everything okay in here? Your mum asked, popping her head through the door. Ijiro was half hovering over you with one arm wrapped around your back to support you as you'd half sat up and your mum stifled a squeak at the compromised position that you two seemed to be in. We're fine, Miss Lynn, Ijiro replied, looking over at her and smiling. We'll be down in a second. Your mum smiled and pulled her head back, heading back down to the dining room. You okay? He asked with a light chuckle. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine, you replied, rubbing your forehead. Here, let me make it better, he said, leaning in and kissing you on the forehead. You were a little surprised to have him kiss you like that, but you loved that he cared and smiled brightly. Thanks, Sharky. I feel much better now. Come on, he said playfully, hopping off your bed. Let's go have dinner. He reached a hand out to you and helped you off the bed, and you held his hand all the way down to the dining room. Later that night, when Ijiro finally went home, you two were texting and chatting when he asked to call you. You agreed and chatted until 3 a.m. Icky! Look at the time, he suddenly said. We have school tomorrow. Oh, true, you're right. Hey, better get going, he paused. I want to go, he pouted. You heard him giggle through the phone. Neither do I, but it's so late. We can talk tomorrow. You smiled. Okay, tomorrow. Bye, Yiki. Bye, Sharky. You pressed end call and looked at the call duration. Five hours? You'd just spoken to Idro for five hours straight with no awkward silences or breaks. It was just so natural with him. He was indeed your best friend. You smiled and hugged your phone to your chest, falling asleep almost instantly. You didn't even feel tired the next morning and texted him the minute you woke up. A reply came back straight away. Did you sleep well? He asked. Like a rock. An Idro rock, you sent back, making a joke about his quirk. Lol, he replied. Are you tired? His next message asked. No, actually, I think I'm just super excited to have you back again. It's like giving me heaps of energy, he sent back honestly. Same here, to be honest. You're constantly on my mind. You smiled. You're my best friend, Sharky. You tapped into your phone. You're mine too, Icky, came back the reply. See you at school. Months went by and every waking moment was spent with Idro. Every afternoon he'd come over and stay for dinner, then you two would do your homework together and after another hour or so he'd go home and then you two would be texting and calling until all hours of the night. You'd been over to his place and seen his mother again. She was just as excited as your mum had been that you two had found each other again. One afternoon at school the fire bell rang. No one seemed too panicked and filed out into the corridor, that is, until they saw black smoke billowing out from the stairwell. Then all hell broke loose. Students were screaming and yelling and running in all directions and you pushed yourself up against the hall wall and wildly looked around, trying to figure out which way to go. You were about to make a move when a strong hand grabbed your wrist. Icky, a familiar voice called to you over the din of the panicked school members. Don't worry, I'm here, I'll save you. Let's play saving, Sharky, he yelled back and he flashed you a big toothy smile before pulling you along behind him and weaving his way through the crowd. The smoke was getting thicker and he took his jacket off and told you to hold it over your nose. What about you, you said worriedly. Don't worry about me, all I care about is you, he said, retaking your hand and leading you to a different stairwell. This way, he called, pushing the door open. You stepped through behind him but someone shoved you in your back as you took a step and you tripped, stumbling towards the top of the stairs. Idro yanked you back towards himself but your sharp tug on his arm as you fell knocked him off balance and he only just had time to wrap you in his arms as you both fell down the stairs. He flicked himself under you so that he took all of the hits as you bounced down into the bottom of the stairwell. He didn't care though, he was happy that he had you safely wrapped in his arms. You screamed as the two of you tumbled and bounced down the first flight, landing heavily on the flat landing spot before the next flight down. Shark, are you okay? I'm so sorry, you yelled, pushing yourself off him and checking him over. He was winded, but otherwise okay. Why didn't you use your quirk, you quizzed him emphatically. You could have hurt yourself really bad. I couldn't, he choked out, still trying to catch his breath. If I had (coughs) activated it, (coughs) it would have cut you. Your eyes widened as you realised that he took those hits and didn't think about protecting himself because it would have hurt you. Your eyes welled up with tears and you fell in to hug him. Sharky, you sobbed. You're so sweet. You didn't need to take all that pain for me. But that's what best friends do, he whispered back, patting you on the head. I need to get you out of here, though. It's not safe. 
He pulled both of you up to standing and helped you down the last flight of stairs and pushed the storewell door open. The paramedics treated Idro for smoke inhalation and significant bruising and you stayed with him in the infirmary until he was discharged. You were still overwhelmed by Idro's care of you and you called your mum to come pick you both up from school. On the way home you told her about how heroic he had been and he blushed when he heard you gushing about him. That weekend you hung out together as usual. Hey Sharky, let's go down to the new cafe down the road, you said enthusiastically. Yeah, okay, he said, smiling at you. He didn't care where you two went. As long as he was with you, he was happy. You both left the house and walked down to the cafe, chatting as you walked. He pushed the door open for you and ushered you inside. It was a cute little cafe with booth seats and you found a quiet little table and sat down, perusing the menu. A bubbly young waitress suddenly appeared at the end of the table and introduced herself as your waitress for the day and Idro fell silent. You glanced up at him and he was just staring at the girl. You cleared your throat. <clears throat> you ready to order shark? Shark? The waitress asked with a little giggle. Oh, um, it's, uh, it's my nickname, Idro stuttered. It's cute. The girl responded, tilting her head to the side with a gorgeous smile. Wow, Idro breathed. You have a beautiful smile. Oh, thank you, she blushed. You watched on, confused. After you and he had ordered, you asked him that burning question. What's up with you? You asked with a little giggle. Hmm? He hummed in question, looking over to where the waitress had walked off. Oh, sorry, Ick. He suddenly snapped back to your conversation. What was your question? You raised an eyebrow at him. Are you okay? You keep staring at her. Oh, really? Is it that obvious? You burst out laughing. Um, yes, like obvious, obvious. Oh, sorry, he chuckled with embarrassment, rubbing the back of his neck. She's just really cute, he said, glancing back to where his newest interest was working. The waitress had looked over at him and winked when she saw him watching her and he blushed and looked away. You were amused, but at the same time you felt a bit sad. Why? The rest of your lunch at the cafe was a bit disjointed, as all of your questions and comments seemed to fall on somewhat deaf ears. Idro was absolutely smitten by this waitress and spent most of his time staring dreamily at her. As you two were about to leave, he asked you to wait for a second. You stopped and watched as he walked over to the waitress that he'd been admiring all afternoon. They had a short chat and she gestured at you. He shook his head and she beamed. You crossed your arms. You watched as he pulled his phone out of his pocket and handed it to her. She happily took it and put her details in, and when she'd finished, she smiled and handed it back to him, which he took, saying something else as he headed back towards you. What was that all about? You asked, trying to hide a bit of hostility in your voice that threatened to surface. Oh, I asked for a number, but at first she said no because she thought we were dating. He laughed openly. Your chest tightened and it felt like someone had stabbed you in your heart. <laughs> it's funny. You forced a weak laugh. I got her number in the end, though, he sighed happily. She's gorgeous. Yeah, you replied flatly. Idro was on such a high that he didn't notice your quietness as you guys walked home. What do you want to do tonight, he asked suddenly. Uh, I'm just going to have an early night, I think, because I'm tired, you said. It wasn't technically a lie. You actually did feel tired, but suddenly all of the life had been sucked out of you. Oh, really? You okay, he asked, looking down at you with a concerned uh, look on his face. Yeah, I'm fine. Just tired, he said again. Um, okay, want to hang tomorrow? He asked happily. Yeah, okay, he responded, still feeling really down. Hey, Ick, you sure you're okay? He asked, only noticing now that something wasn't right with you. You stared at the ground. Yeah, I'm okay. I just, I don't know, Sharky, I just feel flat all of a sudden. It's probably all of those late nights we've had sitting up and chatting that's catching up with you, he giggled, pulling you in for a hug. We'll have an earlier night tonight, okay? No chatting till 3am, he chided playfully. You nodded sadly. Hey, Sharky, what you doing? You tapped into your phone messages and sent to him, rolling onto your back uh, on the bed and holding your phone up, waiting for a reply later that night. He didn't reply. Fifteen minutes went by and still no response. Is he okay, you wondered? He usually replies straight away. Hey, Idro, you good? You typed out again and hit send. Another 20 minutes went by and finally a reply. Hey, Icky, how you feeling? Um, yeah, I'm okay. Where were you, you asked. Me? Oh, I was on the phone with Suki, that cute waitress from today. She's amazing. Your eyes scanned his message and your guts twisted as you read his words. Oh, okay, you replied and hit send before letting your arm fall heavily to your side. You felt weak. You didn't know why, but this whole him liking someone else thing just made you feel yuck. You rolled over and went to sleep. 
The next morning you woke with a start. Oh heck, I forgot to reply Sharky yesterday. You grabbed for your phone and lifted it up, almost expecting a mass of texts from him asking what had happened to you, but there was only two. You okay? And okay, you must have fallen asleep. See you tomorrow. Your heart sank. You curled up into a ball and cried. He must have been texting that Suki chick, you thought. You had kind of hoped that when you woke up, you would find a million texts and missed calls from him worrying about you. But unfortunately, it looked like you no longer mattered to him, and that hurt. You sobbed quietly into your pillows, feeling broken and discouraged. Eventually, you dragged yourself out of bed and got ready for school. As you walked dejectedly into your classroom and found your seat, you dropped your bag unceremoniously at the side of your desk and flopped down in your chair. Your heavy sigh caught the attention of May, who was sitting in front of you, and she turned around to check on you. Hey, what's got you down? You look terrible, she stated, looking you over. Just feeling down, that's all, you replied grumpily. What happened, she asked gently. She wanted to know why the usually happy Yin was so depressed all of a sudden. You shrugged and sh stared down at your desk, hands in your lap. Did you have a fight with Ijiro? she questioned. Your eyes shot up and met hers. N no, you stuttered. Why did you bring him up all of a sudden? This has nothing to do with him, you rambled defensively. Whoa, she replied with a smirk. Seems like I've hit the nail on the head. Just the mention of him has sent you into a tizzy. No, it hasn't, you pouted. Leave me alone, okay? You, did you hope he was going to confess or something and he didn't? She kept badgering you. She wasn't going to give up that easily. No, why would he do that? We're just friends. Your gaze dropped to the desk again. And plus, he has a girlfriend now, you mumbled on the end. He what? She shrieked. Shh, you hushed her harshly. Keep your voice down. But why does he have a girlfriend? She whispered harshly at you. I don't know, you shot angrily at her, your eyes ablaze with fury. He just thought this waitress chick was cute and asked for her number, you huffed. Wait, and you were there? She asked, her jaw dropping open. Yeah, I was, you said, crossing your arms. And he asked her out in front of you? She asked incredulously. Yeah, pretty much, you sighed. Oh, babe, that's rough, she said, shaking her head. What? Why? You asked, confused. She looked at you and snorted. You can't be serious. You like the guy and he asked someone else out in front of you. But I don't like Sharky like that, you replied, slightly exasperated now. Listen, you can lie to yourself all you like, but it's not going to fly with me, she said, rolling her eyes and leading in closer. There's a trick to knowing if you actually like someone or not, though. You looked at her quizzically and raised your eyebrows as if to encourage her to continue. Okay, so you imagine kissing them, and if you can, you like them. And if you can't see yourself kissing them, then you don't, she said proudly. You cocked your head to the side and knitted your brows together, your mind pulling up the image of Idro. He was smiling at you. You leaned in, and you saw him lean closer. Then you closed your eyes. And your lips met. Your heart thumped in your chest as you imagined his lips against yours. Then you heard him whisper your name and into your thoughts and you immediately went a dark shade of red. Aha! I knew it! May screamed when she saw the look on your face. You just kissed him, didn't you? She squealed as she slapped both of her hands to your face. Oh no, do I actually like Ichiro? You screamed internally. I, I can't like him, he has a girlfriend. You have to tell him, May pressured. No, 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 I can't. I don't even like him, I swear, you lied. Don't you dare lie to me like that, May threatened, narrowing her eyes at you. Look, I'm here for you, but you've got to tell him before it's too late. It's already too late. He has a girlfriend, you shot back. You need to check and see if they're actually going out, though. He may not have asked her out yet. What if he rejects me, though, you wailed. I'm pretty sure he won't. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that he likes you back, she said, her initial confidence fading slightly. You tilted your head and shot her, really, look. Then the teacher walked in and class started. Later, you sauntered down to class 1A in the break like you usually did, except this time you were a lot more subdued. You sh slowly pushed the back door of the classroom open and let yourself in, your eyes scanning the room for your best friend. He was talking to a guy you came to know as Todoroki, so you waited quietly and patiently till he was free to chat. You were standing idly there, twiddling your fingers, when Kaminari sidled up to you. Hey, babe, you look a little lonely, he greeted with his usual flirtatiousness. Oh, hey, Kaminari, he said flatly. He eyed you suspiciously. You okay, Ian? You look a little down. Hmm? Oh, nah, I'm okay, he replied in a monotone voice. Kaminari stepped back and looked you up and down. No, something's definitely wrong. You usually come bounding in here full of life. What happened? 
Nothing, you snapped, annoyed that people were starting to notice your change in demeanour. You need to go out with me. That's what you need to do, he said cheekily, giving you a wink. You glared at him for a minute, then conceded. Okay, let's do it, you replied, reaching into your pocket and getting your phone and handing it to him. Put your number in. We'll make plans for the weekend. Whoa, wait, what? You serious? He asked, shocked. Don't get me wrong, I'm stoked, but I just thought I didn't have a chance because of hot stuff there. He nodded towards Idro. You scoffed. Don't make me laugh. We're just friends, nothing more. Okay, cool, he said brightly with a huge grin. He took your phone and put his details in. Hey, Yuki, Idro said brightly, walking over to you and Kaminari. What you doing? He glanced down at your phone being handed back to you. We've got a date this weekend, Kaminari quipped smugly, slinging an arm casually across your shoulders. Idro stiffened. What? He said, deadpanning. Yep, Kaminari winked at him. Idro looked at you and you shrugged. Uh, Ix, can I talk to you for a sec, he said, taking you by the arm and pulling you away from Kaminari and out the door. Oh, shitty hair is not happy with you, back ago, sniggered at Kaminari. What? What do you mean? Didn't he say before that it was okay? He literally just told us that he'd got a number of a pretty girl and he was super keen on her. Yes, I know what he said, shit for brains, but he definitely likes this icky chick. He just doesn't know it yet, back ago, sneered. This is going to be fantastic to watch, he laughed manically. Kaminari shuddered. Yin, are you really going out with Kaminari? Ijiro asked, a tinge of hurt in his voice. Well, not officially, officially going out, but we're going to go on a date together. Yes. Why? You shot back, arc, arcing up at him defensively. Oh, um, no reason, he said, averting his eyes and rubbing his arm, slightly uncomfortable about something. You have a girlfriend now, right? So I can have a boyfriend, yeah? You said, ducking your head to make eye contact with him. Well, I don't actually have a girlfriend yet, his voice trailed off. So you haven't asked her out yet, you asked, you, your eyes widening in surprise. Well, no, because I've only just met her, but I really like her and I want to ask her to be my girlfriend soon, but I'm just waiting for the right time. There was that familiar stab to the heart again, and you grimaced. You okay? He asked, catching the look on your face. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, okay, but just, y you know, he said, his voice trailing off. No, what? You asked, cocking your head to the side. Um, uh, I don't know, he said. I'll see you later, okay? And he quickly jogged off to the guy's bathroom and went in. Weird, you thought, and went back to your classroom. So, May asked excitedly as you entered. So what, you teased, pretending like you didn't know what had her on the edge of her seat. Did you tell him? Nope, you grinned mischievously. But I have a date with Kaminari, you smirked. She deadpanned. Yin, you literally had one job. You cackled manically. No, but Kaminari's nice enough and he's pretty cute, so I'm cool. May just stared at you. You are unbelievable, she said, shaking her head. You laughed openly. The weekend came and so did your date with Kaminari. He was nice, nice enough, but he wasn't sharky and you found yourself constantly comparing the two. As you left the cafe where you two had had lunch, you ran into Ijiro and Suki. They had decided to go on a date too. Your heart skipped a beat when you saw your sharky with another girl and your blood boiled. You did your best to hide your true emotions and make like talk with the two of them for a bit before excusing yourself and Kaminari and heading past. After you'd walked past, you stole a glance back at the disappearing Ijiro and your face soured when you saw, when you saw Suki giggle and reach out to take a gentle hold of Ijiro's arm. So when are you going to tell him? Kaminari asked suddenly as you turned back to look where you were going. What? You yelped. Ijiro, when are you going to tell him you like him? I don't like him, you stammered nervously. You do, and he likes you too. He just doesn't know it yet, Kaminari said casually. He does? You asked, your interest piqued. Yeah, Kaminari shrugged. Who wouldn't? You're gorgeous, Yin. You blushed. Ah, you're such a flirt, Kaminari. You giggled and playfully shoved him away. That afternoon, after you had parted ways with Kaminari, you were chilling in the lounge room watching TV when the doorbell rang. You jumped up and skipped to the door, pulling it open. Idro was there. Oh, you yelled in surprise. Sorry, I, I wasn't expecting you. What are you doing here? You looked past him, almost expecting to see Suki somewhere nearby. I came to see you, he said shyly. But what about Suki, you asked. Oh, I dropped her home after our date and I just had you on my mind. <clears throat> he coughed and cleared his throat. So I uh, thought I'd come over. You blushed and just stood there looking at him. What? He asked, seeing an odd look on your face. 
Oh, sorry, nothing. Uh, please come in, you said, inviting him inside. He walked in and settled immediately, being in such a familiar environment. Want a drink, you asked, strolling into the kitchen. He followed. Yeah, sure, what you got? Your favourite, you beamed, pulling his favourite flavoured tea from the fridge. His face lit up and he leaned down on the counter, watching as you poured two glasses. Ix, do you still have those crazy straws that we used to drink out of all those years ago? He asked. You know what's crazy? You said, walking over to the cutlery drawer. I do, actually, you said, proudly pulling the two crazy straws out that he was referring to. He laughed happily and you brought them over to him. Now you have the blue one because you're a boy and I'll have the pink one because I'm a girl, you said, imitating your four-year-old voice and repeating the exact same phrase that you used to say all those years ago. He chuckled and took the blue straw from you. Okay, Icky, he said, imitating his kid voice, but only if I can try some of your drink from your glass. You giggled. He used to say the same thing as a child. Fine, you pouted playfully, taking a sip through your pink straw. Ijiro did the same with his blue straw and his gentle gaze watched you softly as you drank. You glanced up at him and your eyes met his. Now let me try yours, he demanded playfully, leaning over to stick his straw in your cup. His eyes were still locked onto yours and you both took another sip from the same cup, his face dangerously close to yours. Your gaze lowered to his lips and you suddenly remembered when you had kissed him in your thoughts. Hurriedly you pulled away and blushed. Yin, you okay? He asked, surprised by your sudden retreat. Yeah, fine, you replied quickly, still looking away. He set his cup down and walked around the countertop to you, placing a hand on your arm gently. You jumped violently violently at his soft touch. Ix, calm down, what's wrong? He asked, very concerned now. No, no, I'm fine, you said, turning to face him. Your heart was still beating wildly. You reached out to touch his shirt, but unfortunately your quirk activated because of the stress and your fingertips fused with the fabric immediately. You tried to pull your hand away, but it was no use. Ah, damn it, you mumbled. Hold on, hold on, just calm down now, he chuckled. Let me take my shirt off. He reached for the bottom of his top and pulled it up slowly, revealing an extremely toned set of abs. Your jaw dropped. Never in your wildest dreams did you ever think that he would have a body like that. You stared in awe, swallowing thickly. He pulled his shirt all the way up and off over his head and handed it to you, looking up at you. Ix? Hmm? You replied. Oh, yes, chiseled. I mean, scissors. I need scissors. Wait, is it okay to cut your shirt? He laughed. Yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I have plenty more. He found a pair of scissors and tried to detangle your hand so he could trim the fabric around your fingers. Wait, wait, he yelped as you twisted yourself to give him a better angle. Hold on, this angle's better, he said, walking around behind you and wrapping his arms from behind. You blushed heavily as he rested his chin on your shoulder and started cutting you free. You couldn't move. He was your hot best friend with his gorgeously toned naked top half up against your back and his head resting on your shoulder. You okay, Ian? He whispered in your ear, his voice sending shivers down your spine. Mm-hmm, was all you could reply with, your heart pulsating in your vision. Do you need to sit down? He asked softly. You can sit on my lap if you want to. You went bright red and squ- Idro, wait, you wailed. You have a girlfriend, you can't be so close to me. Wait, Yin, what does this have to even do with the- oh! In your struggles, you managed to pull him over and you both crashed to the floor with him pinning you under his body. Your heart was leaping in your chest and you continued to wriggle. Icky, wait, please calm down. It's okay. His soothing voice slowed your movements. Can, can I talk to you about something? Do I have a choice? You yelped, still pinned under him with your body slightly twisted. It's not like I can go anywhere. He chuckled softly. Well, maybe that's a good thing then, he smirked. That set you off again. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, sorry, I'm kidding. Calm down, he said again, and you slowed your movements. What did you want to talk about? You asked suspiciously, eyeing him from the corner of your eye. I wanted to talk about Suki, he said softly. You rolled your eyes. Yeah, sure, he said stiffly. Icky, I get the feeling that you don't like her. Do you not like her? His direct question caught you off guard. Of course you didn't like her, but how are you supposed to answer that question? Um, I don't know, you replied nonchalantly. Why? Well, it's just you're my best friend and I, w I want you to like her because your opinion matters to me, he said, slowly lifting himself off you and helping you sit up. You're so special to me and I don't want anything, not even a girlfriend to come between us, he added, finally cutting the last piece of the fabric and setting your hand free. If I'm so special... Then why did you ignore me the other night? You were referring to the night that he was talking to Suki and not you. He looked hurt. Iki, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I made you feel like that. I really am. I won't let it happen again. 
He leaned in and hugged you. Tears swelled up in your eyes and you hugged him back, the fingertips of your unfabriced hand digging into his soft back. Thank you, you whispered. It was at that point that your mum walked in, the two of you still sitting on the kitchen floor in a tight embrace with Ijiro, still topless. Your mum nearly dropped her groceries. Ah, uh, hi kids, she said nervously. The two of you looked over at her at the same time, eyes wide in shock like a deer in the headlights. Oh, hi Miss Lynn, Ijiro said happily. Almost uncharacteristically happy for the current awkward situation, you burst out laughing. Sorry, Mum, it's not what it looks like, you said. Ijiro helped you to your feet. You explained what had happened and showed her the shirt still stuck to your hand. Your mum chuckled and went to get the dissolvent, while you and Ijiro went to look for a shirt for him from your room. I think I have an oversized shirt somewhere in here, you muttered, reefing through your drawer. What about this one, Ijiro called out holding up a pink crop top with a picture of a strawberry on it that had sunnies on. You fell apart laughing and encouraged him to put it on. He did, and it fit. The two of you burst out laughing again and kept looking for clothes. As he was looking through your closet, he pulled out a soft dress and held it up. Hey, Icky, this dress is beautiful. You looked over. Oh, that. I haven't worn it in ages. I do love the colour, though. Would you put it on for me? He asked with a cute head tilt and a smile. You blushed. Ah, uh, why? Oh, I just thought you'd look cute in it, he said, rubbing the back of his head and blushing slightly. Your face flushed. Oh, well, maybe I could wear it some time, but uh, not now, you giggled. He was about to say something when your mum interrupted again. Yin, I have the dissolvent red... Idro, what are you wearing? Idro looked down and realised he was still in your pink crop top. Oh, he exclaimed. Your mum burst out laughing and you followed suit. Your mum helped remove the fabric from your fingers and Sharky found an oversized t-shirt of yours to wear. Oh, Yin, uh, while I have you, there's a work banquet this Saturday night and I'd love for you to come with me, your mum pleaded. Please, I don't want to go on my own. I'll go with you and Icky, Miss, y- Miss Lynn, Idro chimed in, walking into the room in your oversized shirt. You spun around and looked at him. Really? You'd go with us? Of course, he replied excitedly. Then you can wear that pretty dress. You blushed and stifled a giggle. Oh, sure he said, trying to hide a big grin. Banquet night arrived, and Idro had planned to meet you and your mum there. You made your way inside with your mum and adjusted your dress nervously. It was a pretty dress, and it complemented your body very nicely. You are a bundle of nerves waiting for your best friend to show up. Suddenly you heard a voice call your nickname, and you looked across the room to where Idro was. He was in a suit. He looked amazing, and your jaw hit the floor. He'd, had he always looked that good? He smiled his big toothy smile and started making his way towards you. Yin, you look amazing, he said in awe, taking a step back to check you out. You giggled and covered your mouth to hide your happy smile. You look amazing too, look at you, he gestured to all of him, taking your hand away from your mouth. So manly. Really, he beamed, excited. You nodded. He took another step towards you and engulfed you in a big hug. You hugged him back happily. The night continued and you caught him staring at you every time that you tried to sneak a side peek at him. Towards the end of the night, they opened the dance floor and he tapped you on the shoulder. Can we dance together? He asked bashfully. Wheeled. No, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine, you stuttered. Whoa, 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 hold still, Yin, easy there, calm down, why are you so worked up? You didn't realise that you'd started trying to frantically wriggle free. You couldn't take much more of this. You shyly took his outstretched hand and he led you to the dance floor. Can you dance? He whispered to you. Nope. Can you? He whispered back. Nope, you giggled. Don't worry, we'll just wing it. He winked at you and your heart fluttered slightly. Around the floor you went, waltzing beautifully. The two of you just were naturally in sync and not once did you step on his feet, much to your surprise. You felt the hand that he had placed on your hip tighten slightly and you cocked your head at him. What's up? You asked him curiously. Oh, you felt that? He asked, surprised. Yeah, you laughed. Why did you grip me? Oh, I just... Wait, let me check something. He took his other hand to your other hip and slid them both up to the smallest part of your waist. They almost touch, he exclaimed as he pushed his fingers together around your waist. You two were still waltzing around and you had your arms up a little, not knowing where to put them. You giggled at his wonder and then he and then cleared your throat. Uh, what do I do with these? You said, flapping your arms slightly. Just flap them like a bird, he said with a giggle. What? You laughed. Do it, he coaxed, laughing hard when you actually did it. No, 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 you can stop now. Put them on my shoulders, he encouraged. You did so, but it felt a bit stiff and awkward. 
He pulled you close to him and your tummy hit his. That's better, he said, smiling down at you. You blushed and averted your eyes, watching the other people dance around you. Without realising it, you slid your hands closer to his neck and interlaced your fingers behind him, and he smiled again when he felt you do this. You side glanced up at him, and he was just gazing lovingly down at you. I'm glad I came tonight, he said softly. Why is that? you asked. Because I got to see you again, and be close to you, he said, leaning down and kissing the top of your head. You quickly pushed away from him and made your way back to the table. You were flustered and confused. Why is he saying this stuff to me when he has a girlfriend, you thought. Well, like, not a girlfriend yet, but someone that he's interested in. Is he flirting with me, or is this him just being nice? You really didn't understand what his anger was, and poor Idro was just as confused as you were. Why did she run away like that, he thought. Did I say something to hurt her feelings? I was just being nice. I didn't think I was saying something unkind. He sadly walked off the dance floor and over to you. Yin, can we talk? he asked, still hurt by your sudden retreat and wanting to get to the bottom of this. You just looked at him. What does he want now? you wondered. Okay, he said bluntly and followed him to the outside balcony. Icky, I don't know what's going on with you anymore. You've been acting really strange and standoffish ever since I started going out with Suki, he said disappointedly. Your eyes welled with tears. How do I tell him that he's sending me mixed signals and it doesn't feel right to be close with him when I know he's interested in her, you thought. Uh, Sharky, I just don't know how to say it, but I feel like it's a bad thing that you're with me and we act so close when she's your girlfriend, you said, paraphrasing and changing the sentence from your mind. But why is that a bad thing? You're my best friend. That's all. Oh, how that sentence hurt. I've known you since you were four. Of course we're going to be close. You're like a sister to me. Another fatal wound. A, ske a tear escaped from your desperate clutches and rolled down your cheek. You don't get it, do you? You sobbed, your bottom lip quivering. Ijiro was stunned. What had he done now? Icky, I'm so sorry. I don't understand. Please tell me what I'm doing wrong. You buried your face in your hands and bawled. He reached out a hand to you, but didn't know what to do. Were you going to push him away again? His hand faltered mid-air. Suddenly fireworks went off, and you looked up in surprise, tears still streaming from your face. Ijiro looked too, admiring the bright flashes, then he looked at you. Even with your tear-stained face, you were still beautiful to him, and he smiled. They're beautiful, you sniffed, looking at the fireworks display. Yeah, you are, he responded softly. Your eyes snapped across to him. He smiled gently and reached a hand out to caress your cheek. He wiped the tears away and looked at your face, running a thumb gently across your lower lip. You melted into him and took a step closer. He was looking at your lips. He gently bit down his own bottom lip, and it took, looked like he was about to lean down and kiss you. You held your breath and waited, but instead of leaning in, he pulled back and looked away. Sorry, Yin, he said quickly and removed his hands. Your heart plummeted. He was so close to making a move. On the way back home, he caught a ride with you, and halfway home reached across to hold your hand. You allowed it, and it made him smile. He rested his other hand under his chin and gazed out the window, deep in thought. He walked you up to your front door when you got there, and opened it for you and your mum, before bidding you good night. His mum had come to pick him up by this point, and it was late, so he didn't want to come inside. Hey, um, Icky, I've been thinking in the car, he said quietly, almost mumbling. I think I'll ask Suki to be my girlfriend tomorrow. You couldn't believe your ears, you deadpanned, your heart sinking and you felt sick to your stomach. Fine, you said, maybe a little too harshly. Are you okay? he asked, concerned by the sudden change in your voice. Yep, you replied angrily. Never been better. You turned and stormed inside, leaving a very perplexed Idra at your front door as you slammed it in his face. You cried yourself to sleep that night. The pain in your heart was too much and you couldn't understand how he could be so cruel. The next morning you texted Kaminari. Hey, you typed out, want to go on a date today? Hell yeah, he replied enthusiastically. What's the occasion? No occasion, I just need a friend right now, you replied bluntly. Is everything okay? he asked. Not really, but I'll explain when I see you. You made plans to meet at the same cafe that you'd had your first date and got ready to leave. So what's up? Kaminari asked after greeting you and finding a seat at the busy little cafe. Man, I just don't know any more, you sighed, telling him about last night's mixed signals, ending with Idro deciding to ask Suki out. Man, that's rough, he replied sympathetically. What are you going to do? What can I do, you said exa exasperated. He's already made his mind up. Kaminari thought a minute, then nodded. 
Yeah, maybe leave him be. He'll come to his senses eventually. I know he likes you. He just has to figure it out himself. You nodded glumly. Do I actually like him though, Kaminari? Or am I just jealous that he has someone and I don't? You can have me. He winked at you and wiggled his eyebrows. You chuckled. Thanks, I'll keep it in mind. He grinned. You two spent the next hour or so chatting and laughing and it was nice to have someone to take your mind off things. He was a good guy and cute too. Maybe he could be your boyfriend. You listened as he chatted on about something and your mind wandered. Your gaze fell to his lips and you decided to try that test that May had told you about and thought about kissing him. The minute he leaned in in your mind to kiss you, you pulled away. Nope, definitely couldn't kiss him. Your attention was brought back to the present when you realised that he had stopped talking. Oh, sorry, Kaminari, you apologised, realising he had caught you mid-daydream. He had a very seductive look on his face and he leaned in, placing his elbows on the table. Were you just thinking about kissing me in? He said in a low, provocative tone. Your face went bright red. How did he know? Ah, uh, no, 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 I wasn't, you stuttered nervously. Oh, you smirked. I saw you staring at my lips just then. No, no, I wasn't. I was just, um... You looked around wildly, trying to find some kind of excuse. He laughed. You can kiss me if you want to, he said invitingly. No, I'm good, I promise, you replied, hands up in defence. Okay, okay, he giggled. Want to go for a walk then? Sure, you said bashfully, following him to the front doors. You exited the cafe and started off down the road when Kaminari looked up. Uh, here's trouble, he said, nodding ahead. You looked up to where he had nodded and there was Ijiro coming towards you, hand in hand with Suki. You soured and grabbed Kaminari's hand, which surprised him, but he immediately caught on to what you were doing and followed your lead. Ah, I see, he said slyly. Wait, I can go one better, okay? And before you had a chance to ask what he meant, he pulled you over to the building wall and pinned you up against it, boxing you in with his hands behi beside your head. Just go with it, he whispered. I'm going to pretend I'm kissing your neck, okay? He leaned in and tucked his head into the crook of your neck, his hot breath shooting across your collarbone. Put your hands on me so it looks like you're enjoying this, he whispered lowly. You obeyed and closed your eyes. Ijiro is going to be so jealous, he whispered to you. Make a little moaning noise or something. He might hear it. You let a small moaning sigh escape your lips and you heard Kaminari's breathing hitch. Whoa, that was hot, he chuckled. Next minute he was ripped off you and thrown to the ground. Your eyes shot open in fright, and to your surprise, Ijiro was standing there, Quirk fully activated and angry. What did I tell you about touching her? Ijiro growled at Kaminari, who was lying on the ground. Sharky, Sharky, it's okay, he said, reaching out to touch his arm. His hardening Quirk had made his forearm angular and sharp, and as your palm came in contact with it, it sliced you open. You recoiled in pain and stepped away from him. He turned and saw what had happened and disengaged immediately. Icky, Icky, I'm so sorry. Are you okay? I didn't mean to hurt you, he cried, grabbing onto you and forcing you to show you his palm. There was blood everywhere. Kaminari grabbed some napkins from inside the cafe, he ordered. The next few minutes saw him tending you to you with a very confused and hurt Suki watching on. Kaminari ended up taking you home, much to Ijiro's dismay, and he watched with dejection as Kaminari took you away. Later that night, there was a knock on the door. It was Ijiro. Hey, he said sullenly. Can I come in? You nodded and led him inside, walking back into the lounge room. How's the hand, he asked, gesturing to your bandaged palm. It's okay, he said, smiling weakly. Sharky, can I ask what happened today? Why did you get so mad at Kaminari? He froze and stared at the floor, leaning back against the couch as he sat across from him. Ah, uh, he paused. I, I don't know. You don't know, you quizzed, cocking your head to the side. Yeah, he said quietly. Well... How did it go with Suki then, you asked. Um, uh, I, I broke it off with her, he said softly. Your heart leapt in your chest. You did? Why? Um, something just wasn't right, he said, not wanting to give too much away. Oh, okay then, you said, hoping he would elaborate. I just wanted to drop by and make sure you were all right, he said, looking up at you. I think I need to call Kaminari and apologise though. I'd better go. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, sure, he said, a soft smile pulling at your face. He smiled back. Ijiro reached into his pocket for his phone once he'd left your house and looked up his contacts, hitting Kaminari's name when he got to it. He felt, held the phone to his ear. Hey man, don't bite me, okay? Kaminari said nervously from the other end. Nah, bro, I'm calling to apologise, Ijiro said gently. I'm really sorry about how I treated you today. 
Listen, dude, you like her. Just admit it, Kaminari said frankly. Idro sighed. Yeah, I do, bro. I realized it today when I saw you with her. Like, I kind of had an idea that maybe I liked her more than friends before now, but I wasn't so sure, but then today confirmed it. Well, you need to tell her, dude. Don't keep holding out. I know, I know, but what if she doesn't like me back and it ruins everything? I don't want to lose her as my best friend. Kaminari laughed heartily. She likes you too, dude. Just go for it. Bro, like every waking moment I'm thinking about her, even when I was out with Suki, she'd still be on my mind. Am I crazy? Ijiro asked, opening up that little bit more. You're crazy that you haven't told her yet. That's the crazy part, Kaminari retorted playfully. Tell her tomorrow, dude. You need to. Okay, bro, okay, he sighed. And just so you know, I didn't kiss her, okay? We were pretending, Kaminari said, cheekiness rising in his voice. What? Why were you pretending? Idro shot back, confused. Because I think she wanted to either make you jealous or see what your reaction would be, he remarked slyly. Well, that's mean, isn't it? Idro pouted. It worked, though, didn't it? Kaminari replied. Idro could almost see the smirk on his face from his words. True, Idro said thoughtfully. Thanks, bro. I appreciate your advice. No problem, dude. Any time. Ijiro smiled and hit end call, now just to figure out how to tell you that he liked you. The next day at school, he decided to test the waters. Now that he had told you that he wasn't with Suki anymore, you should be okay with being close to him, right? Lunchtime rolled around and he met you for lunch as usual. Hey Iki, let's go eat on the roof like uh, last time, he said brightly. Okay, you replied happily, following with your food tray. It was a really lovely day and the gentle warm breeze was comforting and relaxing. You took a deep breath in and sat down next to him on the roof, crossing your legs and plopping the tray into your lap. What did you get? he asked, leaning over to take a look. Just the usual, I guess, he replied, opening the packet of sweet bun and popping the delicious bread in your mouth, half of it still hanging out. Looks good, he commented with a small chuckle. Can I try some? You nodded, but before you could rip the mouthful off and hand, it, hand the bun to him for him to bite it, he leaned over and took a bite from the other end of it while it was still hanging in your mouth. Your nose has touched momentarily and you squeaked in surprise before bursting into a fit of giggles. Sorry, he laughed as he pulled back, chewing the mouthful. That's really yummy, though, he exclaimed. Want some more? You said, opening your mouth and showing him the rest of the bun in your mouth. He wrinkled his nose and snorted softly. Nah, I'm good, he laughed. You giggled again and smiled at him, and he gave you a big toothy grin. Then you poked his front tooth with your finger. It's so sharp, you commented, leaning in to take a better look. He opened his mouth again so that you could see his full set. You whistled. Mmm, impressive. It's not really, though, he replied slightly sadly. Why, you asked, concern rising in your voice. It makes brushing teeth a nightmare, he sighed. You chuckled at the end, uh, at the thought of his poor toothbrushes getting ripped to shreds. How many do you go through a week, you asked with a giggle. Five. Oh, your poor brushes, you smiled sympathetically. He gazed at you, smiling at him, and reached out to cup your cheek in his hand. You're adorable, Yin, he said gently. Your smile faded and your body slumped slightly. Like a sister, right? Your words were cold and flat. Oh, uh, no, not like a sister, he stammered, blushing slightly and removing his hand. Oh, so not like a sister now, you said, cocking an eyebrow. So only a sister when it suits you. Your eyes narrowed and you got up, walking over to the wall of the roof and peering over to check the view. You weren't interested in the view, really. You just wanted an excuse to get away from Sharky. He sighed and got up to follow you. Icky, wait, he said, coming up behind you. You turned around and he was right behind you, so you pressed yourself up against the wall and he placed a hand beside your head to semi-keep you in place. Would you hear me out, he asked shyly, his eyes looking at the ground. About what, you're going to tell me that you're about to marry Suki now, you said sarcastically. I don't know why you're being like this, Icky, he said, deeply hurt by your sarcasm and almost abhorrence of him. Seeing him so hurt by your words made your guts twist and you softened. Sorry, Sharky, he said, stepping forward and hugging him. I'm really sorry. He hugged you back, pulling you as close to him as possible. What's happening to us? Why aren't we getting along like we used to? Your eyes welled up. It's because I like you more than a friend now and I can't be in this limbo forever, you thought. Yin, I, I want to tell you something that's been on my mind for a while now, but I've only just realised that he started. Suddenly the bell rang. You jolted and looked up at him. He paused, mouth half open, not knowing whether to rush his words or save it for later. You So you made the decision for him. Let's talk about this after school, okay? Come to mine, you said, smiling up at him. He nodded and begrudgingly let you go. 
you had to admit you really didn't want him to take his arms off you. After school, you two walked home together, making light talk and avoiding the topic that you'd started on the school roof at lunch. You got home and walked inside. Your mum wasn't home yet, so you decided to raid the cupboard for snacks, digging through the bottom shelves where all the good things were kept. Want some chips? Idro asked, pulling a bag out. Yeah, perfect, you said, returning your attention to pouring the iced tea. Idro smiled at you and sat the bag of chips on the countertop. Okay, Ix, I need to get this out before before I explode, he said suddenly. You looked up at him and set the bottle down. Okay, shoot, you said, stealing yourself for the worst. You had no idea what to expect. Okay, I don't really know where to start, he said, leaning on the countertop. And I don't know if this is going to ruin everything, but I need to get this off my chest. You stayed silent, watching him, your silence encouraging him to continue. Uh, okay, so I'll start with the Kaminari incident yesterday, he said, shifting his gaze to the counter and adjusting his weight nervously. Yes, you coaxed. Um, well, I jumped in because I was jealous of how close he was to you, he said softly, scratching at something on the counter. And, you asked, wanting an elaboration. Um, well, I want to be the only one who's close to you, he added, glancing up at you shyly. Yeah, okay, that makes sense, you said, not understanding what the big deal was. He noticed you didn't get it yet, so he continued. And you know all those times I was out with Suki? You rolled your eyes. Well, all the time I was out with her, I was thinking about you. Your breathing hitched and your face flushed slightly. Wait, is he? And I broke it off with her because I finally realized that I like you more than a friend, more than a best friend. I, this can't be real. I've fallen head over heels for you I is he confessing right now I I just want you to be with me forever be mine I love you Yin I'm in love with you I'm crazy about you he didn't know how many ways to say it so that you would get it your heart was racing pain shooting across your chest from the intense emotions that you were feeling and you just stared at him he watched you not knowing what to make of your expression I know it's sudden and I'm so sorry I've come on so strong I understand if you don't feel the same way right now, I just, I really needed to get this out. I didn't want it to come between us. I still want you as you, as my best friend. I, shut your mouth, Sharky, you suddenly blurted out. He froze, interpreting your loud tone as dissatisfaction of his confession. I'm sorry, Icky, he whispered. You idiot! Tears filled your eyes. Idro stiffened. Oh no, have I upset her again? His eyes flicked across your features. He so desperately wanted to make everything all right. I felt the same way about you for a while too now, even though I didn't realise it either. It was when you started going out with Suki that I realised I didn't want you to be with anybody else but me. You stopped to catch your breath. Your heart was pounding like you'd just run a marathon. That's why I've been so touchy and weird, because you've been saying really lovely things to me, but then you're with her, but then you would want to hold my hand, but then you'd call me a sister. You gestured wildly with your arms to indicate just how opposing things had been. It was so confusing and I was hurt and I cried heaps and yin, he yelped. I'm such an idiot. I'm so sorry. I didn't even notice how I was making you feel. I feel terrible now. The compassion in his voice broke you down and you cried, overwhelmed by this whole conversation. Icky, he said, making his way around to where you stood. He engulfed you in a big hug. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. You nodded into his chest. Of course I forgive you, you cried. I'm just glad it's all out in the open now. So will you be my girlfriend? He asked gently. I never thought that I'd ever get to hear those words come from you, you cried. It's okay, it's okay, he patted your head. We'll never be apart now, I promise. You smiled and sniffed heavily. He hugged you tighter and reached under your chin to lift your head and wipe the tears from your eyes. I love you, Icky, he said, smiling with love and compassion in his eyes. I love you more, Sharky, he replied with a teary smile. He looked into your eyes and glanced at your lips. Oh, how he wanted to know how it felt to kiss you. He lightly bit his bottom lip and tried to look away, but your gaze held him captivated. You leaned up on tippy toes, bringing your lips closer to his, and he cupped the back of your head and leaned down, pressing his soft lips to yours. You kissed, wrapping your arms around the back of his neck. He kissed you again and brushed his tongue lightly against your bottom lip, asking for entrance. You opened your lips and locked into him, kissing him, passion kissing him passionately. He was a good kiss kisser, careful not to let his teeth come in contact with any part of your lips or tongue. There would be some serious damage done if you were to cut yourself on his teeth. You enjoyed each other intimately for a while, then broke away for air. Ijiro was starting to get a little too excited by your proximity, and his kisses were getting hungrier. 
Whoa, Sharky, you giggled, pulling away a bit. He blushed and tucked his head into the crook of your neck. Sorry, Icky, you're just so attractive, he mumbled. You giggled happily. There's no need to rush, Sharky. We have our whole lives ahead of us, he beamed. You're right, Icky, you're right. The end. Well, at least it ended happily, hey? Uh, that concludes uh, the Karishma X female listener. Be with me. I will be back very soon with another book. Bye for now.